When one thinks about a loan shark or money lender, an image of a hulking brute comes to mind. Someone ready to beat the living daylights out of you if you don't pay up on time. It's a surprise then that a money lender nicknamed Demon Devi should turn out to be the skinny strawberry blonde girl with a face described as being as cute as a button. Don't let her pixie-ish appearance fool you however. When it comes to business, she's as hard as nails. When Quo first meets Devi in the name of the wind, he finds her place of business through an alley and up a narrow balcony staircase behind a butcher's shop in Imri. Lacking the funds he needs to pay his tuition fees, Quoth reluctantly agrees to exchange a few drops of his blood for four silver talents. The blood serves as collateral. With it, a borrower would be hard pressed to hide from Devi. To an expert sympathist like her, she can use Quoth's blood to create a link between himself and a doll. Whatever pain is inflicted on the doll can be inflicted on Quoth, should she so wish. Fortunately, Devi isn't the type of person to commit malfeasance without serious reason or cause, and something of a friendship blossoms between her and Quoth, to the point where she lends him books in exchange for music and company. However, in the early stages of the second book, Quoth falls victim to a prickling heat that creeps up through his arm, spreading to his torso. It grows intense, as if someone spilt boiling water over his chest. Later he is stabbed by what feels like an invisible knife. Suspecting Devi might be the one behind the attacks, Quoth confronts her. He fakes a stumble and steals one of her hairs. He asks to see his blood, but she refuses, which leads to one of the most epic duels in the series. Quoth pulls out a wax doll from underneath his cloak and fixes her strawberry blonde hair to the doll's head. He does nothing to hurt her, no fire, no pain, but locks her in place so she can't move. Yet despite Quoth's bindings, Devi is able to shift her hand. She inches her hand closer to her drawer, where she keeps a poor boy, a device used to give a sympathist a bonfire's worth of energy. Quoth concentrates harder, and her hand comes to a halt. Then, slowly, it creeps forward again. Quoth breaks his mind into several pieces, doing all he can to keep her still. But, she still moves. He can't believe it. It is an intense battle of wills, which ends with Devi finally seizing the poor boy and giving Quoth a taste of his own medicine. Devi completely outmatches him during the duel and locks his body so that he can't move his arms, legs, jaw, or even tongue. Some may think Devi's reaction here was over the top, but consider her position in this scene. As a loan shark, she expects to work with some particularly desperate people. Over the years, some of the people must have pushed their luck, perhaps barged their way into her residence, tried to take back their collateral, or may have even attempted to rob her. Over the years, Devi must have learned to expect this sort of behaviour from her clientele. And now, this young man who she's taken a liking to, comes in, demands to take back his blood, breaks her trust, then assaults her. If anything, by defending herself, she reacts quite reasonably. During their confrontation, Devi makes a passing remark that might foreshadow her importance in the third novel. When she turns the tables on Quoth, she goes as far to say that her Allah is like the ocean in a storm. This line bears a strong similarity to one of the three fears the famous philosopher Tekum is credited with saying. There are three things all wise men fear, the sea and storm, a night with no moon, and the anger of a gentle man. A night with no moon refers to the idea of the Fey realm and human realm being tied together by the moon. When there is a full moon, Fey beings can be drawn into the human realm, and when there is no moon, humans can fall into the Fey realm. One must step in the dark on a moonless night, and a mere mortal may just end up stuck in the Fey realm. The anger of a gentle man is likely associated with Quoth's encounter with master archivist Loren in the name of the wind specifically the incident where Loren catches Quoth with an open flame in the archives. His usual placid features turn fierce and hard, contrary to his calm nature. Now the remaining fear Tekum speaks of could be taken quite literally, as Quoth was caught in a shipwreck partway through the second novel. However, if we are willing to accept that Rothfuss is exceptionally careful with his words, then I doubt that Devi's almost word-for-word -word quote of the first part of Tekum's famous saying is just a throwaway comment. The delicate and deliberate way in which Patrick Rothfuss chooses his words is one of the major draws to reading his books. 
Therefore, I don't think it's such a leap to presume that Devi has a significant role to play in the Doors of Stone, based on this line of dialogue alone. Now the question is, how will she affect the third book? Well the answer could well lie in her motivations. We find out that she is desperate to get access to the archives. When she learns that Quoth has discovered a hidden way into the archives, she attempts to buy the knowledge off him, going as far as to offer him a huge sum of money, a discount on his loan, and even proposes to sleep with him. When he denies her, she says, she's getting in there, one way or another. Given that she seems to have plenty of money, and has used people who cannot pay back their loan to get a hold of some reading materials, it is possible that what she seeks from the archives is not any old book. Most students at the university have access to the archives, so she could always persuade one of her connections to bring her a specific book in exchange for settling their debt. I suspect what she really seeks is behind the four plate door, and it's quite possible that she has already made an attempt to get in there. While it is implied Devi was removed from the university for malfeasance and conduct unbecoming, Devi herself alleges that she was expelled because the Masters feared a woman who was capable of defeating Master Sympathist Alxadal at such a young age. Although there was no evidence of malfeasance at the time of her expulsion, according to Willem, and the only other testimony to back Devi's claims are her own words, I think the truth of the matter lies somewhere in the middle. Perhaps Devi tried using her sympathy to force her way through the door, but was caught in the act, leading to the Master's decision to throw her out. Now, what lies behind the door is anyone's guess, but it could be a restrictive section containing a wealth of secret knowledge, including information about the Emir and the Chandrian, among other dangerous things. Devi no doubt has a love for books and a thirst for knowledge, particularly of the arcane arts, and while the door has consumed Quoth's curiosity, it would not be surprising to find out that it has gripped another equally curious student. Characters such as Mola have commented on the similarity between Quoth and Devi. If this theory about why the Masters expelled her turns out to be true, then that decision to oust her alone might have piqued her interest to learn all she can about the door. Devi is a woman who inspires terror in the hearts and minds of the students of the Arcanum. While her nickname Demon Devi is likely exaggerated, it is well deserved given her profession. Devi is not someone you want to cross, and she could well be the demon Quoth tricks to find his heart's desire. Consider this inner monologue from Chronicler at the beginning of the story. Chronicler found himself thinking of a story he had heard, one of the many. The story told of how Quoth had gone looking for his heart's desire. He had to trick a demon to get it, but once it rested in his hand, he was forced to fight an angel to keep it. If Quoth's heart's desire is indeed the knowledge contained behind the four plate door, then there's a real possibility that Devi might be the key to getting in there. I hope we get the chance to see what she's really capable of in the third novel. Perhaps, in helping out Quoth, she shows to us what a real demon she can be. But I'd like to know your thoughts and theories about this compelling character. What do you think she'll get up to in the Doors of Stone? Please comment below, and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Have a great day.